Hey, this is Matt. Once again, welcome back to another video. There's another paid request this time from Michael. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any topics or reviews, what have you, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for The Sentinel from 1977, which I had heard of the film, uh, but never had gotten to sit down and watch it until now. Now, it's directed by Michael Winner. This is the guy who directed the first three Death Wish films. And stars Christina Raines, which I'm not sure what else she's done. But you see some of the other people that pop up, and it's some recognizable people. Chris Sarandon, who's Jerry Dandridge in the original Fright Night. He's here as the new... They've been a boyfriend-girlfriend for a while of our lead character, Christina Raines' character. Always I see Chris Randon in there, like him as an actor. John Terradine, who had been like over a hundred films, he's here as a blind priest that lives in the upper attic type of room in this, uh, a bu this building. Jeff Goldblum's in the film as a photographer, because our lead character is a fashion model. But for some reason, they dubbed his voice, <clears throat> which I don't understand why. I guess they thought his voice was too goofy or something, but... Which is ridiculous, because around this time, probably a year later, he was in Invasion of the Body Snatchers, and no one made fun of him for sounding too goofy or anything. <clears throat> Plus, I think he sounds perfectly fine, so... I don't know what the hell the deal was with that. But it was just really weird to hear, like, there's Jeff Goldblum. I mean, he's not in the film a lot. He's in it for three or so scenes, but... When he talks in his dubs, like, what the fuck? Uh, Christopher Walken shows up as one of these two detectives. Him and Eli Wallach. Eli Wallach, Eli Wallach was the ugly and the good, the bad, and the ugly. He's been a lot of stuff. And there are two detectives investigating this case involving... Which I'll get to. Christopher Walken. If he had more than three lines, I'd be surprised. It's Eli Wallet doing more of the talking. Uh, Tom Berenger pops up at the very, very end from Platoon and Sniper. Quite a few of the Sniper films. He pops up at the very end <clears throat> as a couple one to rent by, you know live at this place. Well, I'll get to that in a minute. You also have Burgess Meredith, Mickey from the first couple of Rocky films, Beverly D'Angelo from National Lampoon's Vacation Films as Chevy Chase's wife. She's in this. So a lot of recognizable people. So again, the story is you have this fashion model who's going out with Chris Randon. Her father passes away. She wants a bit of time for herself, so she able to find this place. Which I, I guess 1977 was very different because it's a pretty... It's in the city, and it's like four to $500 a month. Like it's $500 a month, and it's $400 a month. I'm like, holy shit, has things changed? No way anyone would offer $400 a month nowadays for the area she's living at. And the, the person who gets her the place says, listen, there's only going to be you. And there's this blind priest up top, played by John Terry. And he, he just looks out the window. That's all he does. So you'll have some nice and quiet. <clears throat> so it's in Brooklyn Heights. So she goes about her day, her life. She does fashion model bits with... Jeff Goldblum, who's fucking dubbed for some reason. Uh, she had flashbacks of her old man. I, this made me laugh more than anything, where it's a very old-looking guy, and she pops in, and this old guy's like in the middle of an orgy with a bunch of women, some of them fat women, and one of them's like overeating, like stuff in her face. And then this old man... And then... This bit wasn't funny, where he slaps the girl, his daughter, 
she freaks out, runs off, and immediately cuts her wrists. Now, listen, lady, I know you've seen this old man with a bunch of naked chits was horrifying, but not that horrifying. But, obviously the show case, she's had a history of suicide attempts, which becomes an important part of the story later on. And then she starts meeting people in the building. There's Burgess Meredith, who has his bird and has his cat. Burgess Meredith is always, was always nice to see in movies. Very capable actor. He's not just Mickey from the Rocky films. Just very good actor. Beverly D'Angelo is part of this lesbian couple. And there's a scene where she's literally tr diddling herself in front of the lead character. Pretty much has an orgasm right in front of her. And then there's this weird birthday party where Burgess Meredith has a birthday party for his cat. And there's all these guests there. The, the party ends. She goes back. Then she looks around. And it, there's like no one there. And weird stuff starts happening. She sees that same cat eating that same bird from before. She sees a corpse of what looks like her dad walk in. And she freaks out, cuts its chest, cuts its, its eye off, cuts its nose off. Not bad effects for 1977. She freaks out, tells Chris Sarandon. Uh, people think she had a mental breakdown. She explains like who the people were in the party. She might have killed someone. She thought it was her dad, but her dad's dead. The cops come in. You have Eli Walt and Christopher Walken. And before I go on, I guess the, the reason I do a lot of this, I like, summon the plot. Number one, it helps me get my thoughts in order as I talk it out. I know it sounds stupid, but a lot of times when I talk it out, I it's how I get what I feel about the film out there. This is one thing I, I'm thinking about, but when I actually hear it, I'm like, what, what do I really think about it this way or that way? And also to just sort of go through, like, bits I liked, bits I didn't like, this is what happened, this is what I liked about this, what I don't like about this. So, like, the, the whole cop's angle, to be perfectly honest, I thought that was fairly worthless. I don't think it really led to anywhere. It pretty much led, I guess it led to show an exposition where, oh, these eight people at this party, they're all eight, all eight are dead and all eight were murderers. I mean, Chris Walker literally says that, it's one of his few lines. Went to a party with eight dead murderers. And then Eli Wallach goes, doesn't everybody? But it, they just felt kind of pointless, they didn't really... It didn't lead up to anything. It didn't lead up to some type of confrontation or them being potential victims or anything. It just kind of... That whole thing kind of went away. Like, they're investigating this. They talked a bit and suspicious of Chris Randon. Then Chris Randon is investigating on his own or what's going on. He finds out a bit of what's going on. Pretty much, spoiler alert, he, did, he sees all this stuff that the past people that lived in this place, a priest or like someone had died, and then the next day someone took over their position and became a priest or became a nun. So again, one of them died, and then the next day someone became a priest and a nun and became the next person that lived here. And his woman, Christina Raines, is next on the list. And you come to find out that the Sentinel is a guardian. A guardian against the gates of hell. And pretty much this whole movie is a journey of Christina Raines needing to accept to be a guardian. Number one, to save her soul because she had tried suicide attempts in the past. And number two, we need a new guardian. I know a lot of people like the film. That's fine. I wasn't really, I know I'm 10 minutes in, I wasn't really a fan of the movie. I thought that 
I thought it was rather dull for the most part. I didn't think it was that creepy or scary. Uh, I didn't mind the bit with she sees her dead dad because you know the makeup pets were a bit decent. Christina Reigns was all right, but didn't really knock my socks off, so to speak, in terms of acting. I probably would prefer to Chris Sarandon. If this has happened to him, and he's the one that potentially became the new Sentinel. The new Dorian, because I thought he was the better actor in the movie. Or even, you know, Beverly D'Angelo put her in that role, because I've seen her do good work and stuff. As you know, that be that would have been interesting, but I'm just looking at this, and really, I'm just more fascinated by the re other recognizable people like before they were big stars Jeff Goldblum, Christopher Walken, Tom Berenger. Like, that was the most fascinating part to me. I didn't mind Burgess Meredith's performance, but I just didn't really find much to be creeped out or steered. Especially when you compare to other movies, whether it be The Legend of Hell House at the time, or The Amityville Horror, I found much more interesting in terms of the the haunting, or in terms of the visual aesthetics, or just the supernatural shenanigans. It's, okay, someone has a party for a cat. Beverly D'Angelo diddles herself. Maybe Chevy Chase saw this movie and said, hire her for my wife. <laughs> and that's Boo's vacation. I didn't mind the bit where he's reading. Like, they're looking at a book. When he sees the book, it's all in English. But for her, she sees the same thing over and over again in Latin. And Chris Ryan's like, what are you talking about? Write down what it says. And then she's writing down Latin. He's like, oh my god, you, you really do see it that way, don't you? Because to him and the audience is all in English, but to her she only sees the same Latin. I didn't mind that. Thought that was an interesting idea. But because Chris Seren is doing the investigating, the lead girl was kind of passive for a good chunk of the film. Again, after the thing with the the corpse of her dad, it's she's in the hospital. She's trying to do a work. Oh, that she does this one shoot with Jerry Orbach, another actor, which uh, he was in a lot of stuff. He was the the doctor explaining what happened in Universal Soldier, the original, and then the third act of the film, where Van Damme and the reporter talk to this doctor, Jerry Orbach. He was also Steven Seagal's boss and Alfred Justice. So he's passed away, but he's a good actor. He's a guy I get more and more frustrated because. Our lead girl screwing up. So yeah, she screws up that one. She faints. She goes to another party. She feels dizzy or stuff. Ultimately, she leaves. Like, yeah, she doesn't really do a whole lot. She's not a part of investigation. She's not a part of learning about her own apparent... What's the word I'm looking for? Destiny. It's Chris Redden doing most of the investigation work. He's the one going to find out what this lad thing means. He's the one hiring uh, William Hickey, who, speaking of, he was a National Lampoon's Christmas vacation with the Stody, accidentally burned down the tree. Uh, he was in the first Puppet Master movie at the very beginning. He was the Puppet Master in the first one. He's hired Chris Rennan to break into this place in order to find some information. But this, like, the lead girl, like, there's not a whole... I just don't know what was supposed to be so creepy about this movie, I guess. Because... I don't know, there's not a whole lot of supernatural stuff. Like, you don't see the ghost constantly tormenting her. Like, you find out their end goal is they want her to end her life so that there's no new Guardian, no new Sentinel. But, I mean, showing her a party with for a cat ain't going to do that. The, 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 the corpse of the dad, okay, maybe that. But then, they don't really fuck with her much after that. 
that it didn't seem like to me. At least not enough in a consistent manner to try to get her to end her life like they want. Because she comes back from the party and she's kind of in decent spirits and sees Chris Randon. And then, spoiler, you find out that Chris Randon here is dead. He was killed off screen because he was trying to stop and kill John Carradine. And then you find out that Chris Randon had killed his previous wife. Now, again, maybe this is where the police, the cops, could have been more involved and the whole subplot reached some kind of apex. But like I said the you could take the cops portion out and nothing really would have changed. In fact, replace the cops with a bit more supernatural stuff that is as consistent building up of this girl losing it, seeing things that aren't there, uh, stuff being done to her, but then what's going on? Am I going crazy? More of this supernatural build-up of trying to make her go insane or or end, end it all. That's not really the case in this. Literally, Chris Randon, who's now the one of the dead ghosts, just explains the plot to her about the Sentinel, about the Guardian. Which I don't know why you would want to do that. Like, if you're trying to get her to end her life, why would you tell her, oh, well, God has good plans for you and wants you to watch the gates of hell? Uh, could just lie to her or make something up or make some other bullshit up to try to get her more crazy, more to end her life. But that's when all the, the freaks come out. People with all this makeup on them and really screwed up faces. They come out of the woodwork. Like, where were these characters? They could have been showing up more throughout the film. Hints here and there, subliminally, little bits of... What the hell is that? You don't need a great look at it. And then you see it all in fruition here. But yeah, Burgess Meredith comes out. He calls out all the freaks. They're all slowly going towards the girl. The girl's freaking out, runs to it, ready to end it. Then John Carradine and this other priest come in. And John Carradine is... Priest to fight these ghosts, all he does is just hold this cross. And that's all he does. Is hold this cross. I'm not saying I expect John Carradine to do... You know, dead alive's... I kick ass for the Lord and doing Kung Fu moves. But a little bit more would have been nice. Maybe like a cross, like burns one of them on the forehead or you know, maybe they, if they get close they, they burn or, or something like that would have been appreciated pretty much he slowly go towards and gives the cross she grabs it the baton has been tossed and then cut to New tenants coming in. One of them is Tom Berenger. And the, the person selling the renting the place out says, Oh yeah, there's just a nun upstairs. And cut to now Christine Race has become the blind. I just really wonder, why does it have to be a blind person? Like, why? I guess because if you're blind, you won't see all the, the terror that they try to inflict on you. At least give him a fucking radio or a TV to listen to. Come on, God. Uh, you know, give him this job. At least give him something to listen to instead of just. Can't even say look out the window because where they don't look at, they're fucking blind. <laughs> and how does that protect it? They just stand there with the cross and. It's just them being there. Does every night... That's it. That's the thing. It would have been nice to learn a little bit more what does a sentinel actually do other than sitting in the top looking out the window. Does every night they go around and they got to do this or bless this or do that? Like, is there more to the job or is literally just sitting out looking out the window 
to oblivion or whatever. <laughs> you can't see the city. So maybe a little bit more of that would have been interesting. And it's just like, also, maybe it's a bit infuriating. Because I see a lot of these actors that just aren't utilized much. Like I said, John Terradine, he's pretty much just a blind guy and then pops up at the end. Well, he pops up when Chris Renning tries to choke the shit out of him. And then, uh, at the end. But he doesn't really have much of any dialogue. And John Terradine's a horror actor that was in, a, like I said, over a hundred movies. Jeff Goldblum, you have this good actor, you have him dubbed and barely do anything. Tom Berenger, he just, literally, I think his character's name is Man at the End. That's the name of his character. Christopher Walken, you only give him like three lines of dialogue. Just a waste of a lot of the potential talent. Like I said, Christina reigns as a character. The idea, the fact that when I say past, like she doesn't do a whole lot for a good chunk of it, but to really investigate what's going on with her, what's going on with the proceedings. Then you have Chris Renan doing most of the work, and overall, I thought it was a rather dull affair. So, if people love the film, that's fine. Uh, be my guess, but. With 70s, well, I'll take Legend of Hell House with Roddy McDowell. I'll take uh, Amityville Horror. I'll take other haunted type of places over this. That's just me, though. Probably the one thing I remember about this film throughout the years hearing it is referenced in The Burbs. I can end on that. Because I love The Burbs. It's my favorite Tom Hanks film. And Corey Feldman asked him, have you seen the Sentinel? There's a building and it's all about the gates of hell. So that was the first time, and for many years, that's all I knew about the Sentinel was what it was referenced in the Burbs. But it is what it is. Thanks for watching, take care, and we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.